Good afternoon. It is Sunday, April 24th, and you're looking at a live view of Dragon Endeavour spacecraft as we await its departure from the International Space Station on its way back to planet Earth. We expect Endeavour to push away from the space station at 5.55 p.m. Pacific time with Axiom astronauts Michael Lopez Alegria, Larry Connor, Aton Stiva and Mark Packy that you see on the screen. A short while ago, so a short while ago, the Axiom One crew suited up, and the Dragon and Station hatches were sealed in preparation for departure. We are joining you from. SpaceX's headquarters in Hawthorne, California. My name is Andy Tran, and I'm a quality engineer here at SpaceX. Joining me today is Trisha Bhattacharya, a crew systems group lead at Axiom Space. And monitoring the action from NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas, is NASA's public affairs officer, Gary Jordan. Andy, you and I hosted the docking webcast uh, for this mission on April 9th. Quite a lot has happened on station and since Dragon, then. SpaceX. On the big loop, we are seeing on the ground that the C2 push to talk is being held, but we are not hearing anything on the ground. C3, did you notice any changes to the intercom between any of the other crew members after we had performed the swap on the boards? Uh, Mike, no. Uh, no difference in terms of comms. Yes, Mike made two calls to you on the big loop from uh, seat two. Okay, copy that. Larry, uh, stand by here while we uh, just talk a little bit about that one on the ground. Quite a lot has happened on station since then, including an extended stay for this crew, as we've all been waiting for good weather around Florida. But it is great to be back with you. Launching from Kennedy Space Center on April 8th and docking to the ISS on April 9th, this crew spent their first eight days conducting over 25 experiments, hosting numerous outreach events, and participating in a variety of technology demonstrations and planetary observations. And since then, the crew has packed away all of their critical payloads, including several for NASA into Dragon Endeavor, and all eyes have been on the weather. Yep, wind speeds have been a challenge for the last several days. And Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. With that, we have completed our troubleshooting steps here. On the ground, we're going to swap back to our original configuration, let you know when that is complete, and then have seat two make another comm check back on the big loop. How copy? Mike, I understand you're going to swap back to the original configuration. Once you do, you'll contact us, and then we'll have C2 try another comm check on the big loop. Good words. So what you're seeing and hearing is the crew resource operations engineer on the right-hand side communicating with the astronauts in the Dragon capsule. Uh, looks like they were troubleshooting some communication issues, but things continuing to progress uh, and, and go well. Uh, but tomorrow is looking like a great day to bring the AX-1 crew home. For return, we look at a number of weather items. Some of the obvious ones are no rain or chance of lightning in the recovery zone, both for the safety of the crew inside the capsule and the recovery teams on the water. We also look for wind speeds less than 10 miles per hour and relatively calm seas so we can safely perform recovery operations, which includes landing a helicopter on the recovery ship to fly our crew back to shore. What with the weather now looking good, we're very excited to bring you live coverage of the beginning of the return to Earth of AX-1, the first all-private astronaut mission to the International Space Station. This webcast will follow the crew's departure from the ISS and conclude once they've exited the approach ellipsoid, which is the imaginary outer boundary, boundary excuse me, of the ISS. Then tomorrow, Axiom and SpaceX will pick back up with live coverage starting about an hour before splashdown to share the conclusion the of this loop. historic mission. The ground commands for audio troubleshooting are complete, requesting that seat two make a comm check on the big loop.
Once Dragon departs station, the crew's flight home is expected to last a little more than 16 hours. Uh, Dragon's going to use its Draco thrusters uh, to thrust away from the station in a series of carefully choreographed maneuvers or four departure burns to increase the distance between the spacecraft and the space station. Dragon will also execute a phasing burn to lower its orbit and line the spacecraft up with its landing zone. Then the action starts to pick up pace with trunk separation, closure of the nose cone. And Dragon SpaceX on the big loop. Can we get another comm check from seat two on the big loop? you twice on the uh, big loop. And then prior to that, uh, he tried you twice. And copy that, Larry. We're seeing that on the ground and have been talking about that. Can you, we go ahead and have uh, LA give us a comm check on dragging the ground? And work. So it does look like we are continuing to troubleshoot some communication issues. Um, but for tomorrow, uh, after we do the phasing burn, we'll uh, continue with trunk separation, closure of the nose cone, a deorbit burn, re-entry, then deployment of the drogue and main parachutes, and finally splash down off the coast of Florida, at which point our teams will recover the AX-1 crew. Dragon is targeted to splash down off the coast of Florida tomorrow at 10.06 a.m. Pacific time, followed by the crew getting picked up by sea uh, by one of our SpaceX's, uh, by one of SpaceX's recovery vessels. And as a reminder, just like its approach to the International Space Station, Dragon's departure and deorbit is designed to be fully autonomous, requiring no action from the crew on board. Let's go now to Gary Jordan at NASA's Johnson Space Center to hear about how the crew has been preparing for their return and what we can expect from here until Dragon departs from the station. Gary. Hey, thanks, Trisha and Andy. What a wonderful time this is to be with you guys for the end of the Axiom Mission 1. It's been an eventful 15 days on board the International Space Station. They got a lot done, but of course, we've been doing a lot just today and in the previous days to get ready for this moment. Uh, over the past couple of days, the crew has been loading the SpaceX Dragon Endeavor, their capsule for the uh, AX-1 mission, uh, with cargo and just preparing for the undocking sequence. Um, so. So they loaded about 200 pounds of science and hardware on board. Uh, they got in their in their uh, launch and entry suits, uh, and then they, of course, closed the hatch. That happened about 6:26 uh, p.m. Central Time, a little bit earlier. And then, of course, we broke our coverage for the uh, depressurization of the vestibule. Uh, right now, the vestibule in between the Dragon hatch and the a and the APAS hatch, or the International Space Station hatch, is down to vacuum. But we're in a uh, 30-minute leak check period. Uh, so because of that, we're going to go ahead and delay the undocking time by about 20 minutes. The new target time for undocking the SpaceX Dragon Endeavor tonight is 8.15 p.m. Central Time, 6.15 p.m. Pacific. Um, the teams, again, are in a holding period now as they're undergoing leak checks. There's a little bit of margin built into that, uh, but of course, the, they'll be delaying that undocking about 20 minutes. There's not a one-for-one -one, uh, impact to that splashdown time. They can make it up in the phasing uh, and still splash down right at the time, Andy, that you reported, uh, 1.06 p.m. Eastern Time uh, off the coast of Florida. Uh, within this window right now that we're in, it's about a 90-minute window window for undocking. This is not like the instantaneous launch window that we typically see for launch. There's a lot of flexibility here, uh, and when, of course, we can make it up with the phasing uh, to get our crew members home. 
Now, they've gone through a lot of uh, steps so far. We've, they've gone through the leak checks of their suits, uh, which was A-OK. -okay. You're hearing a bit of the communication checks. They've been doing that for several hours now, making sure that everything's OK. Uh, looks like they're still working through some of the items with the commander seat, uh, and they'll continue to do so uh, just up until the time of undocking. There's a time after the window for checking the leak in between the vestibule um, that they will perform a go, no-go poll for all of the flight control teams, including the International Space Station teams. It also includes the SpaceX and Axiom teams. Make sure everybody's go for a docking, uh, for an undocking rather, at 8.15 p.m. Central Time tonight. Now, before once we get to that point, once we get to that go, and we actually initiate the command, that command uh, expected to be initiated about 8.10 p.m. Uh, Central Time, 6.10 p.m. Pacific, that starts a sequence for uh, undocking, including umbilical retraction and the 12 hooks that are currently holding the Dragon to the International Space Station to be released six at a time. There's a couple, a couple of undocking burns, they're short little pulses to actually physically separate the Dragon from the International Space Station, and then a couple of departure burns to get outside what's called the Keep Out Sphere, and of course what was mentioned prior, the Approach Ellipsoid. The Approach Ellipsoid about a kilometer away from the International Space Station uh, and signifies the end of joint operations, officially NASA's role in all of this, uh, and really we'll be handing it off to the SpaceX teams uh, after that. So we'll be following along uh, live you can see the, the views here of the Dragon um, Endeavor docked to the Zenith or space-facing side, the crew eagerly awaiting the next steps uh, to get them home. And of course, uh, we got a lot to uncover. We're still in that hold holding period right now for the, um, for the leak checks, and we'll hold on to that for a while. That's expected for another maybe 10, 15 minutes before uh, we can go ahead and proceed for that poll to go for undocking. Andy, like you said, the weather's looking pretty great for tomorrow. So we're still trying to undock today. We got that 90-minute window, lots of flexibility for the teams, and we'll be following along every step of the way. We're here in Mission Control Houston uh, going through the steps for undocking the uh, AX-1 crew from the International Space Station, concluding their long and very productive stay on board the International Space Station. But for now, while we're in this uh, period of monitoring uh, the uh, depressurization, making sure everything's good, why don't we toss it back to Hawthorne uh, for a little bit, and of course, we'll continue to stay here, but Andy and Tricia, back to you. Thanks, Gary. As the crew continues to prepare for undocking, let's get to, let's get to know the crew a little bit better. So first up, Michael Lopez Alegria, serving as commander for this mission, is Michael Lopez Alegria, a veteran of three space shuttle flights, one Soyuz flight, and numerous spacewalks. MLA is no stranger to spaceflight. This is not his first trip to the International Space Station. In fact, his last one was Expedition 14, where he also served as mission commander. Let's take a closer look at the commander of AX-1, Michael Lopez Alegria. Michael, I want to know what the first time the feeling was when you got outside of the space shuttle. What was that feeling like? <laughs> you know, most astronauts that have been to space will talk about the overview effect. Basically, it's a a change in perspective. You know, these experiences are really unique. So I'm trying not to set expectations for the crew because I really want them to have their own interpretation of what it's like. American spaceflight record that by uh, former NASA astronaut Michael Lopez Alegria. 215 days in space, 213 of which were on the International Space Station. In 2004, I was assigned to fly a long duration mission to the ISS. My two crewmates on the Soyuz would be a cosmonaut and then a spaceflight participant. And I wasn't too keen with that idea. And the few weeks that I spent training with her and the 10 or so days I spent on orbit with her completely changed my view. It has been a complete 180 degree change of direction. And I went from refusing the Kool-Aid to pouring the Kool-Aid. The thing about LA that's special is his patience and his skill, competence, his trustworthiness. He's well suited to be a commander of any space mission. AX-1 is the first private mission to the International Space Station. We are setting the standard for all future human spaceflight to the ISS, and we take that obligation very, very seriously. 
Our guys have been training for months and they're trying to get a lot done, especially when it comes to scientific experiments and outreach. But I want them to really enjoy the experience and I want them to come home with a big smile on their face. SpaceX training, it's like being a kid in a candy store. A new vehicle, love the human interface with it. It's a really exciting and inspiring place. I mean, he's feeling nostalgia already. Just by going through the training process and being back in, in the business of preparing for a space flight, it's something I know he's enjoying thoroughly. I've been involved with Axiom, which started out literally as a handful of people in 2016 to where it is today. I really tip my cap to all of the people here at Axiom. Hey, boss, don't screw up. <laughs> I'm Michael Lopez Alegria, and I'm the commander of AX1. Next up is Larry Connor, who is AX1's pilot. Larry's experience in piloting over 16 types of aircraft and multiple, multiple deep uh, ocean dives set him up well for this role aboard AX1. While on board, Larry conducted numerous experiments in conjunction with the Mayo Clinic and Cleveland Clinic. Here is a closer look at Larry Connor. Well, Larry, I always start with the big, broad question, why? Well, it's a big opportunity and a big challenge. And you're no stranger to extreme activities, right? Well, I don't classify them as extreme activities. I understand other people would. Larry is an entrepreneur and nonprofit activist investor. Larry Connor will be the pilot for that mission. The pilot is the person who is there to be equally technically proficient as the commander and back them up. My pilot, Larry Connor, American businessman, he comes across as a no-nonsense guy. The words I would use to describe him are focused, organized, driven, and he's a real team player. I was really clear to Axiom right from the beginning. I didn't want to be a space tourist. I didn't want to go up there and sit. This was an opportunity not only to do exploring, but hopefully make a difference. Well, Larry and the other astronauts are doing a couple of sets of studies, the one with respect to heart function, the other with respect to these fundamental aging processes. And the insights that we will get could help a lot of people with a lot of conditions, from childhood cancer survivors through to Alzheimer's disease. One of the things that Larry has been doing is he's been incredibly generous with helping support clinical trials, determining once and for all whether some of these interventions work. Our goal and our hope is, is to try to help revolutionize how we think about and how we serve and how we help people. He wants to do a good job. He, he's putting in the efforts to support his crewmates and just, you know, make an example of what private space flight could be. I just wish the world were filled with people like him. He's generous and thoughtful, and I just can't think of enough positive things to say about him. You have to recognize all of the people up and down the line, they've simply been exceptional. We've got a really talented, committed, resilient group of individuals. Amazing things really are possible. Hi, I'm Larry Connor, and I'm the pilot on AX1. Next is Aton Stibba, who is one of our AX1 mission specialists. Aton had a significant mission in terms of objectives, working with the Ramon Foundation and the Israel Space Agency at the Ministry of Science and Technology. Aton focused on everything from genetic diagnostics to arts and science outreach. Here's a closer look at Aton's story. Tell me what was your first spark to want to fly? That's an interesting question. As a kid, I would close my eyes and dream that I was flying like Superman that I saw on TV. Actually, I went to sleep every night in this position. F-16 is a beautiful aircraft. It gives the pilot a, a feeling of freedom, freedom in the three dimension. You just look at somewhere and pull the stick and the aircraft performs what you wish. He has this inner drive. You see it 
shine or spark when he's exposed to new cultures. My dad has been in the last decade, his heart has been into impact investments to create infrastructure and to help communities. The Rakia mission was built in the same manner, to draw on the curiosity associated with human space travel, to conduct a wide range of experiments, educational studies, and even artistic activities. ראינו שחקר החלל מגרה את כל החושים, מעורר סקרנות, אפילו מאתגר את הדמיון הפרוע ביותר. Rakia patch. It has Rakia written on it in English, Hebrew, and Arabic, and one dot up above for the memory of Elon Ramon. Even though Israel is a technological country, Space is something that ignites a, a curiosity. It's a, unreachable, it's far away. One of my objectives in the mission is to change the sentiment in Israel about human space flights, to inspire children to look up to the sky and imagine things that are not possible and try to reach them. Engine's full power. Lift off. The thrust of Falcon 9 is like two squadrons of F-16s in full afterburner. That power is incredible. I sat inside the simulator of the Dragon, looked up and imagined how that would feel. I think it's going to be the most beautiful thing in the world, seeing this literally take off and seeing all the ideas and all the effort that has been done come to life. It's going to be beautiful. There is an African proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And I'm happy that so many Israeli entities and people can join this effort. My name is Eitan Stibbe. I'm a mission specialist on AX-1. And finally, we come to Mark Pathy, the second mission specialist for AX-1, a longtime philanthropist. Mark worked with the Canadian Space Agency, as well as Montreal Children's Hospital, to conduct a number of experiments on vital organ monitoring, ocular health, and pain management. Let's hear a little more from Mark. In your mind, as you're driving at the pad site, would you have a drive-up song? to get to that moment where I'm sitting in the seat, buckled in, and that countdown's beginning. Three, two, one. I imagine what it's gonna feel like physically in terms of lifting off from the surface of the Earth. It's hard for it to always seem completely real. Then a whole other chapter opens and a whole other adventure begins. I'm very excited to start my training. I've been waiting for a long time. The anticipation's been killing me. And now here we are today. I'm ready. As a proud Canadian, it was important to me to really highlight Canadian universities and Canadian research institutions and to give opportunities to those researchers and those organizations that they might not otherwise have. Mark was entirely committed to developing this mission as a scientific mission. And the theme of the mission was caring for the planet, caring for its people. We're going to be testing new technologies that can help us explore space, staying longer and going farther, but more importantly, can help change our lives here on Earth. There will be a lot of physical and psychological studies that uh, I'll be participating in up there. A lot of the research that I'm undertaking involves uh, using me as a lab rat because that's uh, that's the best way I can contribute. A lot of what one experiences in space, in terms of inflammation, in terms of pain, psychological feelings of isolation, those are things that affect sick kids. To me, I would like to think that I'll leave this world a better place than I found it. The crew is setting a high standard for private astronauts in the future because they're dedicated to science, they're dedicated to the mission, they're able to learn all these objectives, they are building in educational outreach. It's really exciting watching this come together. I'm very excited to work with you 
to complete your science experiments and your educational outreach when you get on board ISS. We know you guys are prepared and we'll be supporting you here from Mission Control in Houston. There's a lot of people, some that I know and many that I don't, that uh, deserve my appreciation and thanks and gratitude for getting me here. I'm Mark Pathy and I'm a mission specialist on AX-1. I really love those videos. It gives a great peek behind the screen of all the work that went into putting this mission together, the training that they had to go through, and what their goals are and objectives are overall for this mission. Pretty cool to see. Yeah, I mean, the, the team has a tremendous amount of support. They've been in space uh, for about 16 days now, a little bit longer than planned. Uh, but they've been doing so much science, and I think we're going to talk about it a little bit later, but um, a tremendous amount of effort there from the teams. Absolutely. Um, so for now, let's uh, take it back to Gary over at uh, Johnson Space Center for an update. Gary? Hey, thanks, uh, Tricia and Andy. Yeah, very good to see the, the crew. They, of course, uh, made those packages ahead of launching to the International Space Station and since have uh, have gone through more than 25 of their experiments. They conducted a number of outreach activities, reaching out to uh, kids and organizations around the globe, uh, and they're now just getting ready to get home. Uh, while we were running those packages, we did hear that the leak check itself uh, looked very good. Um, so, so the vestibule in between the two hatches is down to vacuum. It was a good leak check. Uh, so now we'll just move on to the next uh, sequence of steps. The main one is the go, no go poll. Um, if everything looks good uh, weather-wise, which, which it is continuing to trend in a positive direction, uh, the leak check was good. They're still working through making sure the communications are good. Uh, they'll do a poll just to make sure that they are ready to undock, uh, and then they'll go ahead and initiate the command to start that sequence. That sequence is set to start here. Uh, in about 10 minutes, uh, and then that will start a five-minute sequence uh, to uh, until the Dragon itself physically separates from the International Space Station. Right now, the Dragon is connected by umbilical. Uh, we have the, uh, the umbilicals are providing power and data uh, to the SpaceX Dragon, uh, and it is secured to the station by 12 hooks. What we'll see is the umbilical itself retract, then relying on the Dragon vehicle for the environmental control and life support systems for uh, the battery and, and power, and then, of course, for the communications, and then the hooks will start to retract. There's 12 hooks. They'll retract six at a time. Uh and then they'll uh, conduct uh, a couple of uh, pulse burns. They're con called undocking burns, just really short firings uh, of this, uh, the Dragon's Draco thrusters uh, to physically separate the uh, Dragon from the International Space Station. Then we'll go into a couple of departure burns, namely departure burn zero and one, each just last lasting a couple of seconds, uh, and that will take the Dragon outside of the keep-out sphere and then behind uh, the International Space Station to get eventually below, and then start a, a couple of phasing burns to get in the right orientation, ready for that landing off the coast of Florida. Um, again, we're 20 minutes behind, so we're looking at that undocking sequence to start at 8.10 p.m. Central Time with the physical separation targeted for 8.15 uh, p.m. Central Time. Uh, and then uh, they'll be able to catch up uh, through some of the phasing to, to stick with that landing time that we advertised a little bit after 1 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. This is Mission Control Houston. We are hearing that there may be some availability to move that undocking time up. 
Teams are evaluating now to see if we can move the undocking time up five minutes. We'll stand by. SpaceX Endeavor, we are go for undock and uh, visors are down, res uh, restraints and uh, feet secure. SpaceX copies all. And there you have it. You're getting a live look uh, at the SpaceX flight control team in Hawthorne. Uh, the words you just heard relayed up to the crew confirm uh, what was being discussed here on the ground. Uh, the teams are looking to move the undocking time up five minutes. So that sequence that I advertised before is set to start here in about three minutes, five minutes after the hour, 8.05 p.m., uh, Central Time, 6.05 p.m. Pacific. It's a five-minute sequence with the umbilical retraction and the hook retraction until there is physical separation uh, with the International Space Station. That new time uh, for undocking, Thanks. the yeah, physical separation at 10 p.m. Central Time. to have a uh, camera view? And stand by one, that should be as soon as we command the uh, undocking sequence. Okay, as soon as we uh, command undocking, standing by. We're now one minute away for the teams to execute the undocking sequence. Again, it's a five minute sequence. We're looking at an undock tonight at uh, 8.10 p.m. Central Time, 6.10 p.m. Pacific. Crew's visors are down. This is an automatic sequence once they initiate the command uh, to begin the sequence. The undocking time that we'll report will be the physical separation of SpaceX Dragon Endeavor and the AX-1 crew from the International Space Station. Undock sequence commanded. You just heard confirmation of the initiation. The undocking sequence has begun. The umbilicals are retracting. Umbilical demate complete and nominal.
umbilical has been retracted, the first set of hooks, that six of the 12, are beginning to retract. Again, the umbilical has fully retracted, and the first uh, six hooks of 12 are also retracting. Each of the hooks takes a little bit more than two minutes to fully retract. You see teams uh, at the International Space Station Flight Control Room in uh, Houston, Texas, as well as the SpaceX Flight Control Room in Hawthorne, California, eagerly watching the undocking sequence. First set of hooks open and nominal. The first set of hooks you heard, uh, the six of them have retracted nominally. The other six are now driving in work. We're looking for an undocking, uh, 8.10 p.m. Central Time. We're on track to meet that. And we're about halfway through driving those second set of hooks. Once those are completely driven, uh, the sequence to uh, initiate those burns to physically separate the Dragon from the International Space Station will happen relatively quickly. So we'll stand by to s witness that uh, physical separation uh, and the official undocking of the first private astronaut crew from the International Space Station. All hooks open and nominal. And right on time, physical separation confirmed. 8.10 p.m. Central Time, 6.10 p.m. Pacific. Dragon separation confirmed. Burns are nominal so far. SpaceX Dragon Endeavor and the first private astronaut crew, AX-1, separating from the International Space Station, concluding their 15 days aboard the orbiting laboratory. Depart zero burn complete and nominal.
Nominal burns for the uh, SpaceX Dragon Endeavor. That's a good undock burns in the first departure burn. Depart burn zero looking good. Depart burn one coming up in about five minutes. That undocking time was 8.10 p.m. Central Time, 6.10 p.m. Pacific. Uh, the International Space Station was 262 statute miles over the South Atlantic Ocean, west off the coast of Africa. Flight controllers are tracking a good departure of SpaceX Dragon Endeavor and the AX-1 crew inside. Everything's looking good. They're 45 meters away from the International Space Station, slowly separating. We're coming up on four minutes past the undocking time of uh, the SpaceX Dragon Endeavor and the AX-1 crew. Undocking just uh, four minutes ago. We're expecting that next depart burn coming up in a little bit more than a minute, minute and a half. That'll be depart burn one that will send the crew out of the keep out sphere, which is a 200 meter zone around the International Space Station with its own set of flight rules. Uh, it'll continue to coast outside of the keep out sphere after that depart burn one uh, to the approach ellipsoid. The approach ellipsoid uh, about a kilometer away. Uh, once it exits the approach ellipsoid that uh, ends the joint operations and the, and of uh, the International Space Station teams that you see here in Mission Control Houston, uh, it'll be SpaceX uh, Mission Control in Hawthorne and the uh, Axiom Space teams uh, that'll have the responsibility of taking the crew uh, from the approach ellipsoid uh, down to a safe landing off the coast of Florida. And we're just a few seconds away from the next uh, departure burn. Trajectory is looking good, about uh, a little less than 10 seconds. There you see it. We got confirmation that depart burn one has started. You're seeing those Draco engines firing. This is about a 20 second firing. Dragon speed.
SpaceX on the big loop to part one burn is complete and nominal. At this time, you do have a go to doff your suits per procedure 4.012. As a reminder, ground will be deactivating the big loop following exit from the approach ellipsoid. SpaceX Endeavor, copy all, proceeding to 4.012. Good read back. And you heard her, that's a good uh, depart burn one. This burn uh, is the last that will take them out of the keep out sphere uh, and the approach ellipsoid, which you heard mentioned on the communications to the crew. In the meantime, it means that a lot of the flight rules uh, for having those suits on during the, this uh, particularly dynamic phase of flight with the undocking burns uh, separating from the International Space Station, that has concluded, uh, so they're good to take off their suits. It's a 16-hour ride home, uh, so they'll want to be comfortable, uh, get out of those suits and stretch. Uh, in the meantime, they'll continue to monitor, of course. Uh, we're getting some uh, some views, uh, though intermittent, from the inside the Dragon cabin, uh, and they'll be able to move about the cabin, have a meal, uh, and even rest. Six and never understand uh, cameras external. We just got confirmation the Dragon. Station Houston on the big loop. Dragon has exited the keep out sphere. Station copies. So you heard it called up to the crew, the uh, Four member private astronaut crew have exited the uh, keep out sphere. It'll be at about uh, another 13 minutes or so until they exit the approach ellipsoid and officially end uh, joint operations. Now we'll end our coverage uh, after the uh, approach ellipsoid exit, uh, but the crew's journey, of course, uh, has only just begun. Uh, you heard that there will be doffing off their suits or, or taking them off. Uh, that gets them uh, nice and comfortable for the 16-hour commute that they have from the International Space Station down to a splashdown off the coast of Florida. They undocked uh, just west off the coast of Africa. They'll do a couple of orbits of the Earth and, then, of course, uh, splashdown off the eastern coast. Coast. Their primary uh, splashdown uh, target uh, for this opportunity is Jacksonville, Florida, uh, but they have a couple of backup opportunities identified as well. The teams will be constantly monitoring weather, making sure that it's okay. Uh, as you know, weather has been uncooperative for the past couple of days to get our crew members home, uh, but uh, looking at the weather for tomorrow afternoon, Monday the 25th, things are looking good, uh, trending in the right direction, but teams, of course, will continue to monitor.
The Axiom crew is uh, just a little less than 400 meters from the International Space Station. They're cruising right now. That was the last departure burn that we saw, departure burn one. They're really in a coast phase now to get them out of the approach ellipsoid, and then they'll go through a series of, de of additional departure burns and phasing burns to get them in the right orientation for a splashdown off the coast of Florida. Uh, Andy and Trisha, I don't know if you guys were watching, but it was absolutely incredible to see the uh, Axiom crew undock from the International Space Station, especially during a nighttime, you really got to see those Draco engines uh, light up. It was it was truly astounding from this end. Let's toss it over to Hawthorne, uh, Trisha, and Andy. I, don't, I wonder uh, what your perspective was now seeing that the uh, Axiom crew has undocked from the International Space Station, concluding their stay at the orbiting laboratory. Thanks, Gary. Yes, it certainly was very exciting to watch uh, the Dragon uh, un undock from uh, the space station. Um, things are looking great right now. The crew is on their way to exiting the approach ellipsoid. Um, and so after you know about 15 days aboard the International Space Station, the first all-private astronaut crew is wrapping their mission that began just over 16 days ago now. It's been a mission full of scientific and outreach objectives with the overall goal of expanding space access to a wider global audience. The historic mission began on April 8th with the launch of our AX-1 crew in the Crew Dragon Endeavour from Kennedy Space Center's Launch Pad 39A. Endeavour then made its approach to the ISS, culminating in a successful dock to the Zenith port. The crew, those are some really great shots of the Crew Dragon um, on Launch Pad 39A. It was a beautiful day um, and a gorgeous view there of the Dragon uh, approaching the ISS. Um, the crew, after they docked, was then welcomed by the Expedition 67 crew in the official welcome ceremony. And from there, they jumped right into their busy schedule, then maximized every bit of their time for scientific and outreach objectives. Some of it involved getting used to this entirely new environment. The crew had, you know, over 700 hours of training to prepare for their life on orbit, but when it becomes a reality, it certainly takes some time getting used to it. You know, for example, the fluids behave in a much different way. You have to figure out how to move your body around in a zero-gravity environment. Um, so, you know, there is a period of time to get used to it. The crew's time on station also included observations conducted from the cupola, which has a beautiful view of the Earth. There you can see a gorgeous view of the horizon and some gorgeous views of the auroras right above it. Uh, the crew was also able to film some of their day-to-day -day aspects of on-orbit life. You can see a food storage bag uh, there with all different kinds of meals available for them to eat. I like the peanut butter can right there. Uh, these day-to-day -day aspects are exactly part of what they were able to show in the numerous outreach events that they held on orbit. Larry, Aton, and Mark held several outreach events with students from many different schools and museums. MLA called an international committee conference to order, and Aton spoke with the Israeli president while on orbit, highlighting Israel's return to spaceflight after Elon Ramon, the first Israeli astronaut to fly, and marking Aton as the first Israeli astronaut to be on the ISS. These kinds of events are critical to raising awareness and excitement for the future of spaceflight in future generations. Also, it's just you know really cool to be able to talk to an astronaut real time while they're 250 miles above you in space. Now, additionally, one of the primary objectives of this mission was research and technology demonstrations. For example, the first ever successful demonstration of two-way holoportation shown by Mark there which will enhance telemedicine efforts and help facilitate deep space missions. Additionally, optical lens experiments conducted by Aton uh, that you see on the screen there, the precision and manufacturing that they can achieve in zero gravity significantly bolsters deep space astronomy research efforts. Aton also led a neural wellness technology demonstration to monitor brain activity. And they also had the Astro skin vest demonstrations worn by Mark, which will directly inform new detection techniques for problems with heart, lung, and circulation systems. The mission wasn't only about science and outreach, though. The arts played a big role as well. MLA and prodigy pianist Blackbach made music in space history when they performed a keyboard and piano duet of an original composition. Aton also displays here a beautiful ring specifically designed for microgravity. 
And those were just some of the highlights of the trip. And there was so much more accomplished than what was able to be shown in that video. We'd probably be here for the next 15 days if we went through in detail. Um, but for those of you who are interested, uh, please check out the URL axiomspace.com slash AX1 dash research for uh, an inside look into exactly what they were able to accomplish while on orbit. Yeah, that was um, some really cool clips. I really liked uh, MLA eating or, or I guess drinking or eating the ball of orange juice yeah. and that uh, space ring looked super cool. Um, for now, Dragon is continuing to exit uh, and distance itself from the International Space Station. Uh, we're going to check back in with Gary at, uh, um, uh, in Houston, Texas for updates. Gary? Hey, thanks, Andy and Tricia. Really great to see a lot of the activities that they performed on board the International Space Station. It was truly a sprint. Uh, when we talk about long-duration stays aboard the International Space Station, it's really a marathon. Six months is a very long time, uh, and they got a lot of experiments to do. Uh, but it's, it's not to shy away from the amount of activities that were accomplished on board the AX-1 mission. Lots of science, lots of outreach activities. Uh, they truly did a lot. And, of course, that journey is now coming to an end. So far, the trajectory looks very good for the SpaceX Dragon Endeavor and the AX-1 crew separating from the International Space Station. Exit of the approach ellipsoid is just minutes away. They safely uh, uh, exited the keep out sphere, and we did hear confirmation that two of the four astronauts are already out of their suits, and they're going to start drying them to make sure that they're uh, nice and comfortable for when they redon them uh, for the next dynamic phase of this flight, which is of course, their re-entry through the Earth's atmosphere and splashing down off the coast of Florida. In the meantime, we'll follow from here in Mission Control Houston to make sure that they safely exit the approach ellipsoid, and we'll stand by for confirmation of that. And then, of course, from then, we're, we'll wrap up our coverage, but we'll be monitoring every step of the way uh, with the, really the prime responsibility over with SpaceX and with Axiom Space. This is a live look from the flight control teams over in Hawthorne. They'll be monitoring um, the uh, Dra SpaceX Dragon Endeavor and the a AX-1 crew through the 16-hour journey until they're safely returned to Earth. We just got confirmation the uh, approach ellipsoid exit is expected in about a minute. From there, the teams you're seeing on the screen will take full control over the uh, SpaceX vehicle and the crew inside. Right now, still in joint operations with the International Space Station flight control teams here in Houston, uh, just making sure they exit from the vicinity of the International Space Station, that approach ellipsoid. Uh, it's, it's more like four kilometers by two kilometers by two kilometers is the exact uh, um, specifications of that, that uh, true ellipsoid. Uh, so we'll stand by for confirmation once they've exited that space. And with that, we have confirmation. The uh, AX-1 crew has officially exited the approach Dragon ellipsoid. SpaceX on the big loop. Dragon has exited the approach ellipsoid and is on a safe free drift trajectory. Houston will be taking down the big loop shortly. Expect ISS audio traffic to cease. We hope you enjoyed your time with your hosts on Crew 3, and we're looking forward to getting you home. At this time, we also request swapping any audio destinations back to Dragon to ground when able. Copy all mic break. Uh, Laura, 
uh, you and the um, team there in Houston, thanks once again for all the support through this um, amazing adventure that we've had even longer and more exciting than we thought. Uh, we really appreciate your professionalism, and uh, with that, we'll sign off. All right, you heard it, folks. The uh, AX-1 crew has exited the approach ellipsoid. They are officially uh, outside of the jurisdiction of the International Space Station. It's truly up to the teams at uh, SpaceX and Axiom Space to get these guys home. You heard those congratulatory words from the commander of the mission, Michael Lopez Alegria, uh, uh commending the work uh, of, the, of the NASA teams and, of course, the teams uh, at SpaceX and Axiom uh, for the, their wonderful stay, an extended stay at that, uh, 15 days aboard the orbiting laboratory. They got a lot uh, to experience and, of course, a lot to share uh, when they get to the ground. They're on a 24-hour safe trajectory right now, which means uh, that if uh, they anything were to go wrong, they would be in a good course uh, not to intersect or, or, or any conjunctions that are in the way. Uh, so everything's looking good on that end. So with that, uh, from here in Mission Control Houston, we will conclude our coverage of this mission and truly hand it over to the teams at SpaceX and, uh, and uh, Axiom Space. It's been a wonderful ride. Uh, I've been very close personally to this mission, uh, working very hard to make sure that they've been able to execute all of their activities on board, and it's been a true honor uh, to be uh, a part of this mission uh, and through all of the 15 days. A lot has happened, and it's really the beginning of something greater. Uh, this is the first mission of its kind, uh, and NASA's goal is to see more missions like this. Private astronaut missions are, will be the customer demand uh, in the future for NASA to be eventually one of many.